Okay, so this is a continuation of what we talked about last week, which is how to take the memory objects that we've created as part of a list and pack them with information so that we can store anything we want in an object. Because if you think about an object, what we're doing is we're, we're taking a, a piece of information, like in this case, um, area of a triangle or circumference of a circle. These are our common math formulas. And we're taking these and we are um, we already have an object to represent it so that we can carry it with us easily, right? Because we can carry it with it, carry it with us in our head because we have an image for it. And so what we want to do is we want to pack that object with additional information. And you'll see throughout you know studying we're going to want to pack it with dates, we're going to pack it with statistics, we're going to pack it with causes and effects, we're going to pack it with whatever we want, but we're really only carrying that object. So if we use a story to link the object um, to other objects, um, or if we use some of the other techniques that we're going to learn in the next couple of weeks, we're only going to use that object, uh, <clears throat> for instance, the image of Ariel and the uh, hula hoop, right, for the area of a circle, that's the object that we're going to use when we put it in the story. Uh, but if we want to find out what the area of the circle actually is, then we will likely um, pack it with additional things. Now in this case, we're going to use some common math terms, terms that you're going to see over and over again throughout any kind of math equation. And because we're going to use them over and over again, we're going to create objects for those terms. So then we're going to create our own little mini memory story, memory object story, to link the memory object with the parts, right? So let's take a look at how that's going to work. One second here. All right, so what we've done here is we've gone into our common math formulas and we're going to take circumference of a circle, which we have represented by. Um, a circus of fences, right? We think of a circus and either surrounded by a big circular fence or we have inside uh, a bunch of fences doing tricks or, or jugglers juggling fences, whatever image you decided to use. And so now we want to say what are the links that what are the facts that we want to DTR about this item? And in this case we want to know the formula for figuring out the circumference of the circle. So the circumference of a circle, and this is where sort of you, you mix up <clears throat> memorization and learning, right? Circumference of a circle is this, the length or the distance around the circle. And <clears throat> the way you figure out the circumference of a circle is you multiply the radius of the circle, which is this amount here, the distance from the center to the edge or the circumference, and then <clears throat> multiply that by two, okay? And then multiply that by pi, which is for the sake of argument, 3.14. So 3.14 times the radius will give you the number, will give you the, the, the length of the circumference. So that's kind of cool. It means that you can take the distance between the center and the edge, multiply it by a number, and you're going to get the um, circumference. So it's the ratio between the, the diameter or the radius of the circle and its circumference. And you'll see that we use the same thing for area of a circle. But, <clears throat> so that's understanding how to find circumference. But sometimes you learn formulas or historical facts or lists of things and you don't really understand them at the very beginning when you first learn them, but it's valuable to memorize them so that you can practice as you are developing your understanding. So in this case, we want to be able to turn this formula, C equals 2 uh, pi r, right? C equals 2 pi r, which is 2 times pi times r. We want to be able to turn that into a, uh, we want to be able to store that, right? So we need a memory object. So we already have circumference. And so what we want to do now is we want to pack the object with links, specifically this, the formula. So how do we do that? Well, let's go over here and go to our 
uh, math and science terms because what we have c equals pi 2 times pi times r what we have here is for for each of these terms I have created a memory object okay now you're gonna have to decide like always you're gonna have to decide whether this memory object works for you but remember the goal here is just to remember that the circumference of a circle the formula for circumference of a circle is 2 times pi times r so that means that for each one of these things 2 well I guess yeah 2 times pi times r we're gonna need to have a symbol a memory object that we then link together so that when we think of a circus of fences we think of 2 times pi times r right alright so what do we have here pi pi should be pretty easy right so that's pi so we just use the the the, the uh, pi for for the symbol pi now we might be confusing because we use pi for fractions but we could change that you could use pizza for fractions if you decided to but pi is a natural one for pi okay two the natural thing for two would be uh, that you see two of the things that you're multiplying all right so in this case it could be two pies or it could be two of the things that we use for the symbol r now when I hear r I think of a pirate okay so I think of it as two pi or let's say a pie and two pirates all right because pirates are like r which will be my symbol for R. But remember, you're going to create your own symbol. You could use the word R. You could use, if you have a friend whose name starts with R, you could do that. Um, you could do any any uh, word that starts with R. You can do whatever you want as your symbol for R or for radius. And radius, you could use um, radius. You could use the word radio. Uh, you could do radi. You know, if you're if you like anatomy, you could do. I think radius is like a radial nerve or something like that. But you use whatever you want. You just keep it as your thing, as your object. And in this case, because we have, we're going to be using these so many, so often, so frequently, it's a good idea to have objects uh, sort of stored for each of these. Um, you know, this is a place where you're going to be able to use the same object over and over again, and that's not going to be all that common. So, um, so for instance, what I've done here is I said pi symbol squared when we use the term squared uh, you could use a frame or a square uh, R could be a pirate as we see um, right and I had it a pirate walking from the middle of the circle to the outside to kind of help you remember that that's the radius um, then you have rate which we'll use later is could be thumbs up or thumbs down like when you're rating something um, but that could be something else for you as well time natural one would be watch or clock now here are ones that we're going to use over and over again right multiply divide add and subtract so multiply i like the idea of the concept of cloning right so if we had a pie and we were multiplying then we would turn that pie into multiple pies if we had a pirate and we were multiplying we would turn that pie uh, pirate into multiple uh, pirates um, divide i think a good one is like a, a samurai sword cutting something in half so if we were saying that we were going to take 8 divided by 4, well then you would have 4 taking a samurai sword and cutting 8, okay? Um, adding, what I thought was good for adding would be the concept of construction, like or, or somebody doing building blocks. So if you think of like a little kid doing blocks, um, conjure up that image in your mind, that could be your ongoing, repeatable, use it for the rest of your life image for add. But it can be a lot of things. An ad could be um, a uh, like a newspaper ad or a commercial. Uh, I like the concept of making the thing, like a construction site, adding, being close to the meaning of the word because for whatever reasons. That's, that's my preference. So, for instance, you'll see subtract here um, is stealing. So, I imagine if I was saying that uh, like X subtracted from Y, then I would envision... Um, X or whatever symbol I use for X going over and stealing something from Y. Well, I can imagine that. So that's something that I can can do. Um, and some of these other ones we're going to use. Uh, I'll probably develop these a little bit later because this will be a reasonably long lesson. So I might just take these and do these later. I wanted to make sure I explained the concept. So in this situation, I want to see circumference equals 
2 pi r. So what do I need? I need to use circumference. So I'm going to say my circus of fences, fences, right? And I'm going to say that that, um, that my circus of fences is, right? Because that stands for equals, is a, uh, let's say, 2 pi r. So we'll say um, 2 pi's, right? Multiply, what was my symbol for multiply? Cloning or joining. That's the other thing that I thought would be a good symbol for um, for multiplying. If you think about uh, multiplying, it's, it's sort of putting together to grow bigger or grow stronger. So if we think of two pies joining forces with a pirate or a radio, right, whatever you're going to use, then here's your image. Circus of fences, um, and inside that circ inside, remember, this is how you think of a circuit. You need to go inside the object. So inside the circus of fences, there are two pies. Imagine these. This is the key. You can do this in three seconds, uh, but me talking about it takes longer. But so you go inside the circus of fences, pull open those curtains. Inside the circus of fences, in the middle, you see two ginormous pies, right? Maybe with their hands linked. So imagine these two pies standing up uh, like people, but the, instead of bodies, they have pies, and their hands are linked, and then they walk together. From the other side, you see this pirate lugging around. Maybe he's got a peg leg. He's definitely got a hook. He's maybe got a parrot on his shoulder. They walk together, and then they join forces, right? So they come together and join forces. So now, in my mind's eye, and I'm, do, I'm doing this as I'm describing it, in my mind's eye, I see these two pies and this pirate standing in the middle of this uh, circus tent. And that is my image for um, circumference equals two pi r, okay? <clears throat> so that's that's straightforward. I'm going to save this here. So now I've got my object story, okay? And if I go back into So what you want to do is you want to look at your lists and <clears throat> see what types of object stories you can create. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to create an object story for each of the common math formulas, sort of like what we did with the World War II leaders. So I'm going to make sure that there are object stories in there that you can take a look at, and I might record the videos for them so that you can, or the audio rather, for you to to listen to them. But what you want to do is just like you're getting good at being able to turn a DTR item into a memory object, you want to very quickly and easily pack that object with information so that you can move forward with it, okay? Um, this week, we are also going to learn how to store objects in what's called a mind palace or a memory palace. And what that is, is it's using a familiar area like your house and storing memory objects in different parts of your house so that you can take a virtual tour of your house and do a review of your memory objects. Okay, that's very, very powerful. You've already learned how to create memory objects. You're now learning how to pack those objects. So moving forward, you're developing some real powerful memory techniques.